What's going on you guys? Riley here. Today we are finally back with another video. I know, I know it has been a super long time since anything's been posted on this channel and I sincerely apologize for the long wait. There's just been all kinds of stuff going on in my life. I've been planning on making videos like, all right, I'm going to plan a, a video today and then it starts pouring down raining. So I'm like, well, never mind. So here we are today, uh, a few weeks after my previous video, and uh, I wanted to dive in and talk about some fun stuff with the ZL1. But before we do that, we got Miss Mrs. RP over here. What's up, girl? <laughs> so Mrs. RP treated herself to a 2019 Blazer RS not too long ago, and I haven't shown it off on the channel yet. It has been on Instagram a couple times. But uh, yeah, so this is a Blazer RS. It's all blacked out, as you can pretty much tell. Um, it's got the 20 inch wheels. So this is almost the exact Blazer that I reviewed a few months ago on my channel. The only difference is that one had 21 inch gloss black wheels and that one had a sunroof. This one does not have either of those. However, it does have all of the fancy little interior features that are um, pretty nifty. So it's got the heated and cooled seats and we'll go ahead and start it so this thing stops yelling at us. But uh, she's had it. Let's see how many miles do you have on this thing? 2200. Okay, let's turn this air down. So she's had it for about 2200 miles and you've been enjoying it, huh? Lit. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, it's super nice. Got a wireless little charging pad here. Um, forward collision warning, adaptive cruise control, kind of all the new modern safety stuff, uh, upgraded Bose sound system. Um, but she's been really loving it. She had a truck before and it was great, but it was just kind of large and a little unnecessary she just kind of commutes back and forth to work and didn't really need a, a full-size truck she doesn't do any towing or anything like that so uh, this kind of fits what she is uh, looking for in a vehicle a little bit better and uh yeah but that's the new blazer so sick so yeah mrs rp met me over here at mob auto boutique she had a whole bunch of scratches and stuff down the sides of both of her blazer we think somebody had kind of ran into them and um left scratches and stuff everywhere so went ahead and polished all of that out and uh now that she is gone gonna go get some guacamole because who doesn't love guacamole now we can talk about the good old zl juan so not a whole lot has changed over the past month with this car but there are a few things uh one of the most noticeable differences maybe to you guys would be the fact that i've got some new tires on this thing now so i went with some continental extreme contact sports um, I ran these same exact tires on my Mustang and I absolutely loved them. They're kind of a great blend between performance and also a daily driver tire. So uh, I actually prefer these a whole lot more compared to the um, stock Goodyears that were on this car. Those were just uh, pretty much trash. Now I did end up staying with the same size. So we have 285 3020s in the front and then 305 3020s in the rear. So uh, still a very large footprint going down the road. These tires, like I said, are so much better than the factory ones. So I would highly recommend anybody with a ZL1 uh, to upgrade from those stock Goodyears. They uh, or actually a ZL1 or a 1LE because they are just not very good. I never have liked them. I didn't like them on my old Camaro. I changed them out pretty much immediately and I didn't like them on this Camaro. So now that we have some good rubber, it handles a whole lot better. It puts the, the power down pretty well unless it's a little cold outside, but that is to be expected with a 650 horsepower car. So you just have to set your standards to a certain point and don't expect it to act like a drag radial. Also the gloss black on the spoiler top is still there. Uh, it's actually kind of grown on me a little bit. I will take it off and I will paint the entire thing gloss black as soon as I kind of get a few days where I can set aside and kind of have no spoiler and a couple holes in my trunk lids maybe a couple days when it's not supposed to rain or something like that and then as far as the interior it is exactly the same as it always has been um, I'm actually really really enjoying this car I absolutely love it and then the only other thing I have changed would be a good old Rotofab cold air intake now I'll be honest I don't feel like it's made a huge difference to anything with the car although I will say that the wine is more noticeable now and it's just kind of a cool factor the throttle response might be a little bit better as well um, but overall I just mainly did it to have a little bit of extra supercharger wine when you're kind of getting on it so we'll go have some fun with that here in a minute but I just wanted to go ahead and show it off I mean it's not a, a huge difference it's not like it's gonna add up a hundred horsepower or something like that but it is cool to have also we're finally starting to get some cooler weather down here in Houston so I'm very excited for quote-unquote boost weather and I'm excited to just have fun with this thing over the the kind of 
mild winter that Houston usually has. But yeah, so far we are up to uh, about 8,000 miles on this car and I bought it with just over 5,000. So about 3,000 miles in what, about two, two and a half months. Um, so yeah, I'm absolutely loving this thing. I'm very happy I got it. I think the only thing that I would wish this car had would be a, would be a removable roof like the Corvettes have. And as you guys probably know, I was really wanting to get another Corvette, but um, this Z01 is kind of the best package, best bang for your buck, so to speak. You couldn't find any Z06 Corvettes for um, where you can find these priced at. So I'm extremely, extremely happy. <laughs> Even though this car is fantastic and I absolutely love it, it has had its fair share of minor little uh, problems that have come along with it. So I thought I would share a few of those with you today. Um, they're kind of weird little things here and there that are wrong quote unquote with this car. Uh, however, a couple of them have been fixed. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is that the, so this was one of the very first ZL1s ever built off the production line. Uh, the, the dealership that this one was delivered to was Parkway Chevrolet, which is where I work. Uh, this was actually the first one that they got and the first one that they sold. Uh, so those very first few ZL1s that were built were actually built with the wrong front suspension setup and uh, basically the wrong front springs were put in this car. So uh, previously, the front end wheel gap used to be um, larger than this. Now I know that's still a decent amount. I know everyone wants me to lower this thing and even myself, I wanna lower it. However, it's really hard to argue with how good of a suspension setup that this car has and uh, how how it is. Sorry, got a little distracted. I thought that was a rock chip. It was just something on the paint. But anyways, um, I really wanna lower this car, but it's just hard to mess with perfection and this thing handles so darn well. So it's hard to, you know, mess with the the suspension geometry and everything else. But anyways, uh, so the incorrect springs were actually in this car and it sat uh, a decent amount higher than it currently does. So now the correct springs are in this car and it sits a whole lot better. And actually the, the ride is a lot softer now. So for anybody that has a really early production ZL1, um, maybe you look into that if your suspension looks different than this one does, uh, you might wanna look into that and get the correct springs. There's actually a TSB out for that issue. It's not a recall, but it's just a TSB out to let Chevy know, hey, we messed up, we put the wrong springs in, and if a customer complains, then they'll put the right ones in. Thing number two that was wrong with this car, so if you remember the very first video I posted with this car, I said the previous owner of this ZL1 was actually an older lady, and I guess the older lady had a need for speed and also a need for stopping hard, because when I got it, the brake rotors were slightly warped, I guess you would say. So when you'd get on the brakes, there'd be a very strong vibration uh, in the brake pedal and uh, transfer through the steering wheel as well. So I had to get the brake rotors turned and now that vibration is gone. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what else they did in service, but the brakes are, are now good. However, when I got the car, that was one one thing that was so-so. I was like, oh man, she, she probably drove this thing pretty hard, but oh well. I am too. And then like I mentioned earlier, thing number three was gonna be how just terrible the stock tires are on this car. They are absolutely trash and I would not recommend them to uh, anybody. But then thing number four, this one's actually extremely annoying. So hold on one sec. So here we are sitting inside the car. We're gonna move down now to the clutch pedal. So listen to this and you might be able to tell the issue. Yeah, super fun. So that's something that definitely needs to get fixed and it's just started doing it fairly recently. It started off pretty quiet and now it's gotten to the point where it is quite loud. So um, it used to only do it when it was in first gear under load, but now as you see there, it's in neutral and the car's off and now it's making that terrible creaking noise in neutral. So that is something that definitely needs to get fixed. I'm not sure what will fix that issue if it's something that they can just kind of like grease up the existing uh, clutch pedal assembly or if it needs an entire new one, I'm not sure. So. I'll keep you guys updated on what they end up doing, but that is super, super annoying. And uh, yeah, that 
that one sucks. And lastly, I guess thing number five, if you want to call it that, of things that aren't too good about this particular ZL1, the air conditioned seats are absolutely horrible. They, uh, they, they don't work very well at all. I got very spoiled in my Mustang. The Mustang had really good uh, air conditioned seats, you know, the heated and cooled. So the cooled seat feature of the Mustang was great cooled seat feature in the ZL1 is not great, which is weird because it's a suede material, which usually that transfers that coolness very easily, but this one does not. And I've actually had cases where I have the cooled seats turned on and it kind of feels warm almost. So it's almost like they're, I, I don't really know what's going on with it. I took it into service. They said they're functioning as normal. Um, but I don't know, I don't ever use the cooled seats in this car, which is a darn shame because I live in Texas and it's always so darn hot here. Um, but the cooled seats, not a fan at all. I would say out of all the cooled seats I've felt in my life, this one probably ranks at the bottom. So that's, that's depressing. So for any other ZL1 owner or I guess 2SS 1LE owner out there, let me know if you guys have the same experience that I'm having with the cooled seats not being um, very cooled. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's just this particular car or if it's a, you know, a, a typical thing of that seat design. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that comes to mind that I dislike about this car or anything wrong with it. And really, that's about it. So, I mean, just five minor little things. I would say the worst issue out of all of that, um, which is probably the unresolved one with the clutch pedal being extremely noisy. Um, but once that gets fixed, I'm sure I'll be a little bit happier but overall this car is just so mean looking every time i park this thing and look at it i just get super excited it's always a joy to drive and uh i, I really would say for around fifty thousand dollars or so a used zl1 is probably the best bang for your buck vehicle that you can buy out there just for the overall performance in a straight line the handling um, braking looks I mean just absolutely everything the fact that you can daily drive this car and it's actually pretty comfortable I would say the only things that are kind of a drawback would be the somewhat small interior the very large doors that are kind of a pain to get in and out of when you park this thing in a parking spot so granted you would probably never open your door that that far anyways but the doors are huge in this thing, and then you combine that with the kind of aggressive bolstering in the Recaro seats, and you kind of have to do some little acrobatic uh, maneuvers to get in in tight parking spots. But aside from that, and then the kind of small trunk opening, even though I would, I would say the trunk is a decent size, the trunk opening itself is pretty small. I got crap everywhere in there, my bad. We'll just go ahead and shut that and pretend that nothing's in there. But I mean, aside from just a couple minor things, this is a great daily driver. It's a great performance car. I really wanna take this thing to Circuit of the Americas and do a full track day with this thing on a proper racetrack, not just kind of some small racetrack that's almost meant for go-karts. I wanna take this thing to a true racetrack and see what it does. And even though I'm no professional race car driver, I think I would have a ton of fun and I think it would actually be a pretty, competitive car out there just versus everything else and I can't say enough good things about the ZL1 the 6 gen Camaro platform the Alpha chassis it really is a great bang for your buck and I would highly recommend anybody out there looking for a good you know all around performance car to check out a 6 gen ZL1 but that pretty much wraps up today's video guys I know it was kind of short and simple and to the point uh, I promise I do have a lot of stuff planned it's just a matter of getting around to doing all of it and finding the time and finding the good weather every weekend that I've set aside some time to film these videos it's been raining or just something else has, has came up and kind of sucks and I feel really bad I haven't posted anything for almost a month now and that's that's very unlike me usually I try to get like one or two things out a week but um, I promise I got some very fun stuff coming up in the future and uh, thanks for sticking with me guys and I will see y'all in the next one take it easy